With the holiday of 2019 approaching, gamers normally get all of the best games throughout the entire year within a few months. One of these games is Control. It's one of the first games released this holiday, actually. Control is developed by Remedy Games and published by 505 Games. Released on August the 27th, 2019 for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Did the creators of games like Quantum Break and Alan Wake have a home run? Or maybe it's just an average game that's not necessarily going to push them towards, you know, that next level that developers really thrive for to get to. Let's go ahead and get with this review. And keep in mind, this is my opinions and my opinions only. Uh, without further ado, let's get on with the review. So let's go ahead and start with the graphics and performance. Control is not an eye candy game by any means, but it's not below what the consumers expect for a game to look like in 2019. I played this game exclusively on the Xbox One S for this entire review, and the game definitely has that dark, grimy filter throughout the entire game. As far as performance, this game runs very poorly on the Xbox One S. And from what I'm told, on other platforms it's not much better, besides PC. And even with PCs, it takes high-end cards to push that 4K60. The frame would drop noticeably about doing pretty much anything in this game. Not even joking, you guys. If you want to open up your map, drop frames. If you want to just press start, dramatic frame drop. I don't even understand how this got out of their playing test and felt like this was an acceptable product to give to the consumer. This game ran horribly about 50% of the time and it looked like I was playing art for a couple minutes, man. It, it's bad, it's really bad. You do anything in the UI on this game, you're going to have a giant frame rate. So when you come out of the pause menu, everything is so slow, so you better hope no one's shooting at you. And I'm very disappointed in Remedy Games for having this game come out the way it did. One of the good things I really enjoyed about this game is Control is made out of something called the Northlight engine. It's a unique thing that about this engine is when it, what it gives the gamers the ability to do. This game has some of the best destructive power I've ever seen in a game, outside of games like Red Faction or maybe even Battlefield. One of the powers you have access to is pretty much telekinesis, the ability to throw objects with your mind. Uh, the cool thing about this is if you run out of stuff to throw, this chick literally just starts ripping stuff off the wall and ripping the ground up to, to throw it as well. So you can be in certain battles and after that battle, literally pillars of stones completely destroyed. Like the sky's the limit through a lot of the, uh, the battles in here. Uh, you know, I was ripping off heads of statues, ripping off satellites, and I've never really seen that type of gameplay in this type of game. And I really enjoyed that. It's one of the reasons that really kept me into the game. So let's go ahead and talk about the story a little bit. When I mean talk about the story, I'm going to butcher the hell out of this story. So if you are very keen to this story and you love this story, click off the video now. Because you're not going to like anything I say for the next two or three minutes because it's going to get bad. It's going to get rough. It's going to be nasty. This story is so confusing and it's one of the biggest parts that I have a beef with this game. Uh, it requires you to beat the game before you really understand what's going on. The game starts you as a protagonist, Jessie Fiendin, or whatever the hell her name is, entering a building looking for her brother, which, you know, they didn't really go into at that time, that he's been missing for years. Now, I'm not saying this story was bad. I'm saying that the story was extremely confusing because it demanded you to be in a fewer, few hours of the game before you really even understood anything what's relevant that's going on. Now I know a lot of you are like, oh Attic, you gotta read all of the all of the collectibles, everything you did. That's the only way to figure out what's going on. Look, I'm calling bullshit on that. I do not like games that make you do that. Text should never replace the actual narrative that's being told in a game. For instance, you know what I like when there's text implied into a game? Let's take Dead Space, for example. Dead Space, you are took in the place as Isaac. You play the game as Isaac. You find out what happened to your wife through Isaac. Now, if you want to find out, find out how the events that happened to your wife happened, they give you text and dialogue and video recording and voice recording to know what happened back then. They never expect you 
to understand what's going on right now with Isaac through that. Sure, it, this might just not be something that I enjoy. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that enjoy this type of gameplay. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that enjoy this type of narrative. I am not one of them. It's my opinion exclusively. There is an entire fan base that lives and breathes Kojima. So clearly, I might be the minority on this one, but it doesn't make me wrong. Well, it might, I don't know. So the whole story of Control gave me a huge Stranger Things feeling, which I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it's really, really there. And I felt like the developer, uh, you know, the developers, they might be a huge fan of this Netflix original uh, because it really makes you feel like, you know, it's it's a lot of a lot of references. Uh, you know, there's old computers. So, you know, maybe that was the direction, uh, but that's the way I took it. I felt like another thing that really annoyed me about Control was the ending was a little disappointing because of the way they decided to end this game. It's clearly an ending that they want to allow for any type of room for sequels, but I felt like it could have been done a lot better and still give them the options for those sequels. But that's just me. Uh, I am a firm believer that an ending can ruin an entire game. I don't think this ruined the game, but I do think it definitely hurt it. Now don't get me wrong, the story narrative was, wasn't horrible. I just felt like Remedy has a hard time with pacing and explaining a world correctly. This game could have been easily as crazy as they wanted it to be, but you know, you just put a little bit more storytelling, a little bit of way better actually character development. And the reason I say that much character development is because no one in this game was memorable. I didn't care about anyone in this game, including the main character, including her main character's shit ass brother, all the characters in this game. I couldn't tell you one person's name in this game. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I, I, I doubt that. I was definitely paying attention. Uh, you know, there was the chick that was in that uh, that meeting room. I can't remember her name. There was the, the, like the head security or something like that. Uh, you know, I paid attention to the story. It's just none of them ever had that time to shine to really make me want to care about that character. And by the time you really start, you know, putting pieces together, the game's over. Now let's talk about gameplay. Because this is the saving grace of this game. And is the only reason I did not completely write this game off in the first couple hours of playing it. The gameplay here starts out a little bit of slow. Uh, then, you know, they do explain everything well. Uh, they, they make sure you know how to understand of how to use your abilities, use your powers, use your guns. I was going to try to drop the game multiple times, but then I got to this one particular part. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play for you uh, because after this part, I felt like I was so enticed with the gameplay that I couldn't drop it. Here it is. What makes this game so addictive is the options you have and how you want to play. You want to just play this game as a shooter and upgrade all your guns? You can if you just want to play the game correctly like I did and upgrade all your superhuman powers to the max and just float around like a god and throw everything around you at your enemies and give them almost really no chance of success. Uh, this was by far the greatest way I could play it. The gunplay isn't bad, but it, there, it didn't take away from the fact that I love throwing satellites and kill four or five people in a row. And I think that's what really kept me on this game because I can't really explain to you how satisfying it was to play a game without really using any of the guns knowing that they're there. Uh, there is something special about hovering in midair and throwing satellite dishes at your opponent. This gameplay was so good at the towards the end of the game, I almost forgot the problems I had with the game in general. Almost. So in conclusion, Control is a game that had a rough start, and I mean a really horrible, I almost dropped the game start. Multiple times I almost dropped this game. However, once you start getting stuff unlocked, you get the abilities unlocked, 
and you know the game unfolds before your eyes you start understanding a little bit more about what's going on what the story is why you're doing what you're doing you'll find yourself on twitter deleting tweets of you saying you're going to drop the game no i did not delete them that was a joke control is no way perfect by any means the story is so confusing that I'm sure some of you have played this game multiple times and you still might not know what's going on by the end of that game. If you enjoy solid gameplay and a good story, if you read everything in the game and watch all the cutscenes multiple times, Control is for you. If not, wait for it to be on sale. Maybe, you know, Black Friday is coming up, pick it up there. Uh, you might be able to even Redbox. I don't even know, I don't even know if Redbox is a thing anymore of games. I haven't used Redbox in forever. But anyway, you know, tell me what you guys think. Did you guys beat this? Uh, did you do you disagree with anything I said in the comment section? Uh, go ahead and like the like the video if you don't mind. Share it to as many of your friends as possible. Uh, until next time, this is Gaming Addict. I'm out of here. Peace.